Before I start introducing myself and my topic, I would like to connect everyone in this room with my acacia tree here in the photo. This is my ceremonial space in Taipei. By chanting a short song gifted, her, gifted by her to me and now to you. I have lost my tribe and my language, but I haven't lost my roots and my connection to her acacia. There is only one word in this chant, ina. It's the only Taiwanese indigenous, indigenous word I know that has been spoken by my ancestors. It's the word for mother. And so if you would like to, please repeat after me, ina. Okay, and if I may. I will start chanting, and my wishes is that you can feel her through me. I've come to talk about Famosa Wasca and Ayahuasca and uh, Acacia Ayahuasca Analog and how working with her has brought me back to my roots, reclaiming my connection with my ancestors and the land of Taiwan. Okay. Oops. Um. Just like how the Navis in the movie Avatar make their connection to their tree of souls, where they can talk to their ancestors to recall their past and even to remember their future. It's been, it's long been known that various species of acacia contain DMT. Acacia confucia is a native plant found in Taiwan, where I'm from. Confucius, Confucius, it is named after the famous Chinese philosopher Confucius. Well, this is a very exciting and massive topic that has to do with Chinese magic, but I have to skip that in this talk. Acacia Confucius has high concentration of DMT up to 2% in its root bark. Just 20 grams of root bark would be sufficient for a very strong dose. Uh, it is a Chinese medicine used mainly for liver detox. I have personally talked to many Chinese, Chinese medicine doctors and they're shocked when I told them that acacia can be psychoactive. There is no found evidence that this plant has been used as a psychoactive agent in Chinese medicine. So it would be very exciting to find tribal culture using ayahuasca-like substance outside of Central and South America. I have personally gone to the tribes in Taiwan, asked around tribal shamans, and researched all the papers I can get hold of. I've heard of shamans in Taiwan using the tura, but unfortunately, there is no evidence that this Aborigine, that the Aborigines of Taiwan used a cage of confusion for ayahuasca preparations. And um, Famosa Wasca gets its name from the island of Taiwan, which has formerly known as Famosa. 
If you don't know where Taiwan is, it's an island on the east coast of China. And of course, in this room, I don't have to explain what ayahuasca is. Um, well, Formosa Wasca uh, is an analog that used utilized Acacia Confucia and Syrian root. Interestingly enough, this combination of Acacia and Syrian root came not from Asia, but the Middle East. In the ancient Egyptian mythology, their tree of life is Acacia Nilotica, and Isis is the goddess of uh, Acacia. And Syrian rue, Helma, Helmel, is a sacred plant of the Zoroastrians, which the Persian people uses as an incense to war of the evil eye and to create an auspicious atmosphere. Both plants are found in the Middle East. Professor Benny Shannon from Hebrew University of Jerusalem even argues that the vision of burning bushes Moses saw might have been the result of this combination of acacia and Syrian rue, but who knows? Um, as many mysterious synchronicities have happened in my life, I personally have a pretty deep, deep connection to the Middle East, even long before I met Acacia Confucia. I went to Israel for the first time when I was 28 and have been keeping on going back to Israel over the years. Uh, from what I know, the Acacias in Israel or in the Middle East in general are not very effective as a DMT carrier. I have met people in Israel who have tried to use local Israeli acacia to make ayahuasca. Well, they say that they don't really get visions, but only headaches. I don't know why, though, this combination of acacia and Syrian root should have a Middle Eastern root. But the acacia in the Middle East is very quiet. Nothing like what ayahuasca, uh, acacia confusia from Taiwan is doing now is making waves and it has definitely gained recognition as an ayahuasca analog. Famosa ayahuasca, aka Acacia Confucia, has developed over the past decade through the experiences of various communities and individuals because it is a very common plant in Taiwan. It is easy to prepare and very effective. Anyone can easily purchase it in a Chinese medicine herbal shop. While ayahuasca from Peru is difficult to obtain, a trip to Peru would be very expensive. Many people in Taiwan began to utilize this plant for its psychoactive effects in spiritual and therapeutic context. Um, I'm gonna start talking about my story. I uh, encountered Acacia Confucia for the first time in 2012. I had such an intense experience. I remember I was devoured by, by a serpent and everything around me came alive. The memories of the land started revealing themselves to me. I saw genocide and bloodshed, energy from the stars downloading down into my system. I, my body was having, like I was being played like a piece of instrument and I was having full body orgasms and I was making voices that I have never heard of before, uh, heard before. And, um, and I remember very clearly Acacia Confucia told me, um, I don't know why, but it was in English. She said to me, uh, like a grand, like an old grandmother, she said, you, 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 you think you want to be a healer? You, no, 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 no. You have been fucking around doing this and doing that. No, 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 no. You have to do this. And she told me, and you have to go to Peru. If you went to Peru, your true identity will be revealed to you. 
And so I went to Peru very, very soon after that initial experience with Acacia Confucia and started training with the Peruvian ayahuasca. I studied both Shipipo and Mestizo traditions, learned to sing in both Shipipo and Quechua languages, sitting in the jungle for months and months, doing a list of plant, a master plant diets like any serious ayahuasca apprentice would do, devoting all of myself to the medicine, letting, letting the plants sing through me, penetrating my consciousness, rooting in me and teaching me. Well, the difference between Peruvian ayahuasca and Taiwanese acacia confusia, speaking from my personal experience, I think that Peruvian ayahuasca is much darker and wilder comparing to acacia. Because I study both Shipipo and Mestizo traditions, I think that the Shipipo is very good at opening astral portals. The Shipipo medicine is very often very high tech in its vision and its wisdom feeling more like a path of power. And on the other hand, mestizo medicines is more earthy and motherly from my experience. And acacia, confucia, is much more elegant and magical in my experience working with her. Acacia is definitely an ayahuasca experience, but the character of the plant is different. She is, to me, much more physical than the Peruvian ayahuasca. People more often have catharsis in their process, and the things uh, like experiencing ship-shifting into different animals, having full-body orgasms, or feeling that the medicine is acting as a chiropractor, feelings of bones being realigned, these reports are significant, significantly more common than Peruvian ayahuasca, relatively speaking. From my personal, um, for me personally, the visions I get from acacia are brighter and has more magical and occult teachings in it. On the other hand, Peruvian ayahuasca has more purgative and healing aspects to it. And um, there's an episode about magician Damien Echoes in Netflix series, Midnight Gospel. He's this fishball guy in that episode. He mentioned about um, how oral traditions are being passed down from master to students. And he made a point that you can only pass the current if you have received the current, he said. Uh, through my journey, though my journey started with Acacia Confucia, but Acacia insisted that I go to Peru. I think because I needed to receive this current from the plant spirits, which is still intact in Peru. After spending years dieting in the jungles of, of Amazonia, I feel that Peruvian ayahuasca has rerouted me back to my roots with Acacia Confucia. Um, in my early stage of training with Peruvian ayahuasca, for sure I had Peruvian plants, spirits came to me and taught me things, but also, I had a vision of an Asian tree spirit that came to me. I saw this Japanese-style shrine temple of this majestic tea, uh, tea spirit with little uh, tree genies dancing in front of the temple, the shrine. The, te the shrine in my vision looking very similar to this poster of animation of uh, Spirit Away, if you know that movie. And the genies dancing, also looking like this white fluffy thing here on the left. So I had no idea why this majestic uh, Asian tree plant spirit came to me and what it wants from me. Also around the same time, Peruvian ayahuasca showed me things in my bloodline, something she insisted I must know. I must find out more information about my ancestors, knowing where I'm from, my roots. So I went home and start digging. Anyone who has dieted the plants in the jungle would know that the real lessons begin after the ceremony and long diets in the jungle have ended. Everything starts talking to you. 
and you notice that information keep on coming in, signs and synchronicities. One thing leads to another. You showed up at the right time, at the right place to meet the right person to give you the exact right piece of information. Things like that happened. And um, there's a very wise man in my life, my dad. My dad studies history. And he has always told me that, remember, the names in the school history books are real, but the stories are fake. And the names in the novels and the movies are fake, but the stories are real. And um, eventually, I discovered that the sacred mountain of Taiwan, Alishan, used to have huge forests filled with Taiwanese cypress trees over 3,000 years old. And it was deforested entirely by the first Japanese occupation and then the Chiang Kai-shek government. Can you imagine an entire forest filled with majestic trees over 3,000 years old? So the story, story goes, that the woodcutters who cut down these trees started to have strange diseases that doctors cannot cure. Even the rice that they cooked became red and unedible. Eventually, they had to call a shaman from Japan to release, to perform a ritual to release the anger of the cypress tree spirits. There's now a monument on Alishan literally called the one on the right, a tree spirit monument, which was made after this incident. I have personally gone to um, the place and pay my respect to the tree spirits and told them that I know now, I remember, and I won't forget. I believe it was these 3,000-year-old Taiwanese cypress trees who came to my vision in Peru and guided me to discover their story. Um, I was always being told that my ancestors came from southern China. My, I never knew that I have Taiwanese indig indigenous blood. Eventually, my dad told me that my grandmother called her mother in Ina, which is the word from mother in Taiwanese indigenous language. My grandmother came from Beitou. It's a place famous for hot spring near Taipei. And it was where the lost tribe of Catalan used to live. Beitou, the name of the place means exactly the witches, the witches. And it took me almost 10 years to re rediscover that I'm a direct descendant of the witches of the lost tribe of Catalan. One of my first cousins became a Taoist priest. I can't help thinking maybe it does run in the bloodline. Um, so instead of having shamans as my teachers, I have a, a very different kinds of teachers on my path. Um, the lady on the left is my Japanese Urasenke tea ceremony teacher. Tea is my other plant teacher. Tea is a practice of cultivating five senses to stretch the fabric of time so that one can be totally in the moment. It is an understanding of telepathic communication with others, with Mother Nature, with the passing seasons around you through your body to be with and to become everything with tea. I would say that sometimes your awareness became laser sharp and you can almost access the same space that the plant spirits, the medicine, uh, plant medicine use. And, um, Tea is very subtle, but it's very magnetic. It can, in, it can open up a magnetic dream state. It, it can be shamanic, though it's not typically psychedelic. On the right is my friend Sogyu. He's um, very famous. Uh, he's one of the 
few people who has taken LSD in the 60s in Japan. He became a Buddhist monk because of his LSD experiences. And uh, he has been taking LSD while being a monk and uh, undergoing very rigid Buddhist training. Uh, Sogyu also um, hosted a very, uh, like this music festival in Japan called Yamaudo is like equivalent to what Woodstock would be in the West. And he also started an eco village in near Kyoto. And he's this one of these icons that uh, made the first hippie move wave in Japan. I and mean, I would say in Taiwan as well. Uh, I mean, in general, in Asia. And, uh, and we often exchange insights and about many things. And we talk about his experience uh, learning Zen, like going through these koans. Yeah, like you have to answer questions like, bring me the universe, that kind of stuff. And he's like, he's taking LSD while with, immersed in this very high level uh, Zen Buddhist training. So it's very interesting talking to him. And um, and he told me that he doesn't need to take LSD anymore because it doesn't affect him at all anymore. And so um, so these people became my uh, teacher on the path. And I remember asking Sogyu like, why some people became better after having psychedelic experiences, but some people became even worse. And he said that because one needs guidance and that's why he became a monk. And I believe that's why I needed to go to Peru because I needed the guidance of Peruvian ayahuasca to carry this current. And um, and Sogi also said that he noticed that the the monks who have, has had psychedelic experiences uh, never gaze through darkness much better than those monks who hasn't had any psychedelic experiences. So overall, uh, in conclusion, my journey has been profoundly influenced by many cultures and traditions and uh, also because I'm a traveler and um, and I believe that this wave of Acacia Confucia is getting her momentum and beginning to form a new psychedelic culture from Taiwan and maybe it will even spread to China and to the world. Thank you.